This is March 25, 2021, and Stephen Bruce is here uh, at the home of Chris and Christine. And they've just purchased some beautiful art. So Stephen, can you explain uh, what you're trying to do with this art, what it means? Uh, yeah, so I, I, pay, I paint with acid on metal. So these are on copper and brass. And um, I'm kind of uh, fixated on uh, the transition of uh, day and night, or whether it be, whether it be sunset or sunrise, um, and um, how we each interpret that feeling. And so um, I call them abstract landscapes. And sometimes, uh, uh, sometimes you may, for one person, they may see a beach and water, and another person might be from Kansas and some might see wheat in the sky. And so, but it's always that interplay of where land meets land meets the sky, or land meets, you know, land meets water, or water meets sky. Um, and then I'm manipulating oxidation to get those effects, uh, to get that, uh, that feeling of a horizon. Um, uh, the medium is, 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 is based in science, and so for me there's always this, uh, this fun trip of, of controlling the reaction enough to get where I want to be, but also uh, leaving room for a lot of spontaneity. Uh, in that reaction uh, as the acid meets the metal. And um, how did you get into art and why this particular medium? Uh, I was a sales rep for an artist for about 17 years and I um, firmly believe that I had no artistic ability. Um, I went to Catholic school and if you didn't do art in a very particular way, um, it just you weren't good uh, the way they explained it. Um, as I became a sales rep for an artist, I met more artists. Um, they would, um, you know, counsel me and say art is more about creativity than about execution. Um, and they actually pushed me to, you know, to explore my creative side. And so one of, when they would ask what would I do, I, I knew that somehow I would work with copper. I had a history of working with copper as a kid. I made copper bracelets, and they would and they would turn green. And so um, my father gave me an explanation little lecture on oxidation and why that happens. Um, and so as I grew up, um, I just thought the examples that my father had given me, which was a Statue of Liberty, which turns green, copper pipe that turned blue, and a painting that turned that nutty brown, that there had to be more colors than just what I knew. And if so, could I, you know, could I discover them and could I put them into play? And that kind of set me off on the journey. And so I usually think with pickle juice, the hot sauce, to hydrochloric acid, and each acid has a unique response on the metal. And how long have you been doing this? Uh, I did my first show in 2006 um, uh, in Lake Tahoe, Squaw Valley. And um, um, I can remember because I had done probably hundreds of shows as a sales rep, but my first show, showing my work, um, I had butterflies all morning, and I think I went to the bathroom probably six times before nine o'clock. <laughs> so, um, it's a different expression when you're talking about your work, and probably more so then, um, um, because you're trying to communicate, um, you know, hopefully what you're trying to get out of the metal, but if it's your first time, it's one thing to talk about somebody else's work, it's different, it's a lot more personal when it's your work, um, and there's a certain vulnerability about that. Are there, from a lay perspective, are there artists 20th century or 21st century or before that have inspired you, that have that you that you sort of draw on their energy. So um, Rothko was probably this was just my initial uh, inspiration. I, as a young person, I always thought that Rothko's work was overblown um, because of the simplicity of it. But as I you know became older and started you know researching, um, you know what was it? What was he trying to achieve? And he would talk about the interaction of to the exchange of color um, and how that drama draws you in to that point in the center where the, where the you know, color changes. Um, and so that to me represented you know, more of a, uh, a kind of horizon was what I thought about, um, how I interpreted that. Um, more currently, Richard Mayhew, Richard Mayhew is one considered one of the American masters in painting and is 96 uh, next week. And um, it's from the Harlem Renaissance and he does these abstract landscapes and 
he would explain uh, that the uh, that abstract landscape is not a place; it's a feeling, and it belongs to no one. It's because it's in everybody's mind, separate, you know, kind of their own interpretation. And so, um, uh, I can remember hearing him say that, and it, and um, um, and looking at his work and understanding that. Uh, he also does a little more interaction of the two colors as they exchange, uh, so they introduce one another. They got. Um, we're having to do a little more separation, um, but those are two artists that are, you know, are really inspired by. Great. Any final thoughts? Departing with uh, <laughs> some three children. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, art is about creativity, and um, and uh, when I'm working with kids, I want them to understand that everybody has their own creativity. It is unique to you, and you just have to find your people who respond to your creativity and uh, and don't ever let anybody tell you uh, that your creativity isn't isn't valued great thank you mm -hmm.